Negative interest rates will make Wall Street billionaires even richer, allowing them to continue buying up America by devaluing earned income. Americans are dealing with a banker-manipulated medium of exchange. Negative interest rates are confiscatory. The globalists are not draining the swamp, they are swamping the land. If you want an example in the extreme, try Weimar Germany when the vultures flew in and bought up the country, paper money in exchange for everything that was Germany. The term negative interest rate is just another polite term for oligarchical confiscation. The central banks of the world, BIS, work in concert. If you want an example of what negative interest rates in the extreme will do, try New World Order. The last of all, historical data. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Christine Lagarde said that the European Central Bank still had room to cut rates if needed. However, she added that this could pose a challenge to financial stability in Europe. More and more banks are passing on the negative interest rates to depositors, and this is undermining the elderly and pensions. From a broader view, this policy of negative interest rates has weakened the euro even as a reserve currency. Nobody wants it in their books. It is like it has the plague. I cannot express how dangerous this policy of negative interest rates has been. It has been the cure to eliminate the euro as a reserve currency. If the US wants to kill the dollar, just adopt negative interest rates and watch how it plummets. I believe you may see Lagarde try to unravel this mess created by Draghi. The most recent adventure in lowering rates is going to cause another housing crisis in the entry-level market. As the rates dropped, idiots are bidding up the entry-level homes way beyond what they are worth, and thus actually increasing their monthly payments, down payments, taxes, and PMI. Prices have jumped 10% before they are being bid up, mortgages are being written at 6 times income, and the appraisers are ignoring home conditions and houses with basements when pulling comparables. Everyone is ignoring significant problems with these houses, such as roofs that need to be replaced, old HVAC systems, PVC plumbing, and crumbling siding that the buyers will not have the money to fix. I told a guy in the building business that I had never seen it like this before. He said that he had in 2006. Fiat digital US dollar is created at virtually zero cost on computers, so why should there be any scarcity cost, interest, attached to that? This takes no real work, and almost nothing is actually done. The money supply is created by new lending, and if new credit seems excessive, interest rates are increased. If new loan is no adequate in volume, interest rates are lowered. If needed, the interest rate can go to zero then below to stimulate more private sector credit creation. If more spending is desired, the rates paid on savings accounts are reduced until some of those savings are disgorged into the marketplace to circulate. Deposits are not really required to lend money into existence, and they could actually be abolished as such accounts are really a cost to the business that accepts the deposits, and the USG instructs the banks that they must accept deposits, so they do. All the money they lend is created out of thin air, and the reserve requirement could be reduced to zero. When the banks get into trouble on paper as in 2008-09, the Fed supplies them with fresh reserves also created out of thin air. The central banks coordinate credit growth, so whether it's the greenback or something new, I doubt it will curb 244 trillion in debt plus a mysterious 500 trillion in derivatives. It's all absorbed or moved around eventually, so for those who hate globalism, I'm afraid that setup has been around for two decades. The only way to realign the concept of value is to bring back lender regulation, which now would taper credit growth gradually over a decade. They had that opportunity after two rounds of QE, but currently the options are limited to trade politics leading to conflict between trading blocks. Not a good plan and a very inefficient method to run a global economy. The impression I get after 20 years of study is this elephant is running wild in the streets. They have lost control and can no longer provide a solution that is manageable politically. Central banks are backed into a corner waiting for Jesus to come to the rescue. That debt can never be reclaimed anyway. It's funny money and everyone knows it, but if the dollar collapses so does that debt, the bank's power and the Fed. So they have no choice but to keep on printing, keep on propping it up and keep trying to convince people it's worth more than the paper it's printed on. Even if in the bottom of our hearts we know it's not. 
Its continued existence is based solely on ever-diminishing faith and people's fear of the unknown. It's a death spiral from a great height that threatens not only the dollar but fiat currencies in general. The central banks are trapped. Negative rates coupled with QE raise questions about central banks' exit potentially becoming more difficult in the future and increase the risk of a policy error as well as perceptions about debt monetization. It potentially creates bond bubbles by lowering bond yields below their equilibrium or fair value creating fears that an eventual return to normality could be accompanied by sharp price declines. Perceptions about bond bubbles can increase long-term uncertainty. In turn, higher risk might prevent economic agents such as businesses from spending. We have reached debt saturation, the growth limit wall, the end of fiat. Money renters simply can no longer loan you money and expect to be paid with money that never existed. Case in point, Wages in the West haven't really increased since we left the gold standard. As a result, we really haven't been able to save or consume, only add more debt or bring women into the workforce, not sound. Central bank-controlled governments have allowed themselves to give us free until the cows come home, all the while this has caused the working man's labor to be reduced with higher taxes, inflation, lower pay through unchecked immigration, and Chinese manufacturing. Look if that banks crashed today, the credit economy will take a hit. Somewhere there has to be an equilibrium. In Russia, it's 7.5% minus 7.5%, so then, it's not the world going negative, seeing as Russia is healthily positive. So, why can't the advanced West be positive? Well, my friends, it's something to do with debt, gargantuan debt to be precise. So what's the difference between debt and gargantuan debt? Well, with debt, you produce to reduce and eventually liquidate it. But with gargantuan debt, you gotta keep adding to the debt just to make it to the next payment, like living paycheck to paycheck on loans. The problem for the US is that the paycheck is reducing in size, while the debt is increasing. But worse than that, is that the debt is utilized for consumption rather than production, which compounds the problem. Because the US is consuming, rather than accumulating capital. But it gets worse. Folks have forgotten what their forebears fearfully understood that, without providential grace, all the efforts of man are like dust in the wind, unproductive. They knew this so we'll, their every effort was commenced with beseeching providential grace. Because they understood perfectly well, that wisdom and humility were required, first, to acknowledge human weakness and limitations, and second, to be guided in their endeavors. Because they were very well versed in the tales of the ancients about the consequences of hubris and arrogant pride. Central banks can't go much further with negative interest rate. They will instead pivot to helicopter money, MMT, and buying stocks and real estate. Inflation, super high taxation and an even more obvious increase in wealth disparity will cause average people to finally understand that central banking and fiat money are asset striping operations for the deep state and 0.01%. Governments in the West will have to become much more draconian and fascist to avoid protests and opposition. The media will get worse with their propaganda, not better. At some point, it will send with total collapse and lack of confidence in fiat currencies altogether. For the Fed and the banksters who own the Fed and the federal government, it was never ever about some inflation target or full employment mandate. Those were simple smokescreens. For simpletons. The banksters just wanted to suppress the end of the business cycle long enough for them to acquire enough gold before the sheet hits the fan. They just didn't want a repeat of last time when they got caught with their pants down and jumped out of the windows. Only Lehman and Bear Stearns got to do that. Plain and simple. When will people ever wake up to the fact that a debt-based monetary system is a danger to civilization? If you rely on creating money primarily through debt creation, there then exists a situation in which growth is not just desired, but required, and if you don't grow revenues enough to cover the interest on that debt, you are in deep trouble. Debt-based money creation also fuels the property and financial markets bubble since most created money goes into property and market investments and misses the real economy almost totally. Somehow the banks have convinced people that the best way to create money is to let them manage it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Anyone relying on 20% rate credit cards to live day to day is screwed. Anyone looking to retire soon with a strong IRA 401k needs to do a lot of research into spending it wisely since you can't make anything on it in government bonds. 
Any pension funds relying on government bonds will be forced to go to Wall Street casinos to make any returns to keep the cash flowing. Ma and Pa retiree better be debt-free and able to live on Social Security until it runs out. After that, it will be death panels at the first sign of illness or hangnail. Jesus' only recorded moment of anger in scripture was when he made a whip of cords and beat overturned the moneylenders, the bankers' tables in the city square. Scripture records him, saying the love of money is the root of all evil. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.